Your Excellency, a warm welcome to CNBC. Thank you for speaking with me today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you today. I also have to say thank you so much for having us here in Doha and at the Doha Forum. The conversations so far have been brilliant and it's very refreshing to have open and honest conversations about the state of play in the region and in particular the state of play in the economy. So let's begin on the economy first. What do the latest numbers tell us about Qatar's economy today? Yes. Uh, actually, I mean, we have done very good, you know, in the last few years, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of GDP growth last year, we closed with 4.4 percent. And this year, sh it's, it's going to slow down a little bit because of the World Cup yes, uh, last year. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, the activities related to the World Cup. So it's going to be coming to the normalized levels. We should expect in the future, you know, in around 2026, 27, 28, another spike in the growth because of the increase in the LNG you know, production by 65%. Uh, but our, our, our focus really in the diversification of the economy. You know, I mean, uh, our focus is really to move from hydrocarbon-based economy to knowledge-based economy and to activate other sectors, you know, manufacturing, tourism, logistics, uh, technology, AI. And, you know, this is the sectors we're going to be focusing on. And as, we, as, as, as I say that, you know, I mean, we are finalizing the last stages of National Development Strategy 3, which take us to the 2030, which is our the Qatar vision 2030, where we can become, you know, diversified from the, you know, hydrocarbon industry. So, and also, you know, if you look to the other numbers, I mean, inflation is really under control. It came down from the peak last year to six, from 6% six to 2% this year. You know, uh, uh, as I said, the GDP growth was, was coming along and also everything, the fiscal was excellent. Uh, we had, a, we recorded a surplus last year of $25 billion and this year we are also looking for a good surplus as, as we, uh, as we had a very good year in terms of like, you know, oil prices as well as, you know, the, you know, uh, the performance of other sectors as well. Mm. When it comes to the numbers, I believe it was 1% year over year in the second quarter relating specifically to growth. You mentioned we could potentially see that post World Cup normalization and slowdown. What is that going to look like? Yeah, I mean, we just actually finalized the session with the IMF team, you know, doing chapter four, which is uh, the full of review of the economy. Uh, the expectation we are going to be around, on, uh, averaging around 2.5% for the next three years. And then we're going to have a, a spike, a jump, almost near two double digits, you know, for, for two years. And then we're going to be around the three, four percent from, from thereafter. So, which is, I mean, it's, it's an excellent number, I mean, in, in anybody's uh, terms, you know, especially when you have, we don't have uh, inflation issues, you know, in the, in the economy. Uh, so, uh, in terms of like, you know, I mean, you know, uh, the, I mean, the future look for Qatar economy looks extremely excellent, you know. And what we have done, you know, also I think it's very important, you know, at, at the fiscal policy, you know, uh, level, you know, we have built a medium term fiscal policy framework, you know, which really controls and, and put different scenarios under different revenue scenarios. And we put ceilings and spending ceilings, you know, depending on these scenarios, you know, going, 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 going forward. It's a very, I mean, it's a medium term, it's a 10 years plus, you know, view. And the idea also to decide on how, what to do with the surplus or the deficit in, in the case of deficit. But if there is surplus, for example, we know exactly where is, how much is going to go to settle debt, how much is going to go to the Qatar Investment Authority, how much is going to go for the to enhance the reserves of the country. Very clear formula done, decided, you know, no, no discussions about it. So basically, we, this will become more disciplined in terms of our view to the fiscal, you know, going forward. Mm. And when it comes to the economic diversification strategy here, something that Qatar has really been focusing on is this outperformance in non-oil growth, which mm. really makes this economy unique in this part of the world. Yeah. But at the same time, the hydrocarbon growth has been really strong as well. We've seen sustained high energy prices, strong demands for gas out of Western Europe, really continuing the momentum there. So mm. just on the energy side, What's your take on pricing right now? Do you think this type of pricing is going to be sustained? Yeah, I mean, we look to the, I mean, the $70, $80 pricing is a good pricing level. And it's good for the buyer and the seller. You know, I mean, for us as a suppliers, it's good for us. And also for, you know, I mean, the buyers is good because this is where we see it's, it's a reasonable price. If it starts going higher than this, then, you know, it's, it's a bit, you know, I mean, uh, not good. Even for, for us as, as a supplier, yes, it helps us with the fiscal and everything, but at the end of the day, we, ha we, need, we need to have the long view because if it becomes non-affordable, then 
people will come up with different ways to reduce demand and you know i mean and and other uh, other issues you know there is going to come with the, with the pricing so we believe the 70 80 dollars is the is, is the good price levels for every, where both are comfortable you know the suppliers and the buyers what about tighter financial conditions globally? The big conversation within the developed markets like the United States at the moment is, are we at or near a peak in interest rates? Of course, because of the currency peg, that impacts the GCC quite significantly. So where are we at? Do you think we've seen a peak in rates now? And yeah. how are tighter financial conditions yeah. impacting Qatar? Yeah, I think you know, it's, it's all linked to the US economy and, uh, and the performance of the US economy. The US economy has been performing very well, you know, as you know, the numbers, I mean, employment, real estate, retail, everything, really, everything really, I mean, at the right, at the right level. Only inflation, and inflation even is not too bad, because, you know, at 3% is not too bad. 2% maybe the aggressive set by the Fed was a bit aggressive, you know, target, but, but even at 3% is, is not uh, a too bad inflation. I think analysts talks about recession in, about in the U.S. next year and whether it would happen or, or not, or, or how long and how short, you know, that recession. Uh, I think most likely we should not see a recession at the U.S. level. You know, given the numbers we are seeing today, there, is, there are no signs of, re of a recession or slowdown in the, in the U.S. Uh, you know, I think we had aggressive analysts like UBS, they said 2.75% reduction in the interest rate next year. I think that's a bit aggressive. You know, I, although I, I mean, I wish it could happen because it will help you know, economies to, to perform better, especially in the world, including Qatar. And, but I think the expectation, we should start, you know, slowly, maybe by the end of the year, second half, 50 to 75 basis point. I think that's reasonable. Uh, Qatar, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, we don't didn't, we didn't have the same inflation or the economic conditions, you know, like the U.S., but we are, we are obliged, you know, to follow the U.S., you know, uh, you know interest rate policy, you know, uh, because we need to avoid any arbitrage with the currency because we are back you know to the dollar so we don't want people to shift from real to dollar so our central bank was as well as other gcc central banks you know they were pushed to to maintain the same relationship with the interest rate going forward mm. i wanted to ask you about the new conflict that we have unfolding against the backdrop of the Doha Forum, but also against the backdrop of what has already been such a challenging year for so many people. Qatar has played a really important and critical role when it comes to the mediation between Israel and Hamas. And of course, the focus right now is on the people. But I also have to ask you about the impact on the economy. Are we seeing an impact in Qatar or around the region? Yeah. I mean, wars are not good anywhere, regardless whether it's in the region or outside the region. We have seen what, what happened with the Russia-Ukraine war and, 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 and the disruption to the supply chain and the inflation in food, in energy, everything, you know, and the shortage of energy. So, I mean, usually always wars are really, I mean, you know, uh, really, I mean, affects economies. And the closer the war to you, I mean, the closer the problem uh, is, is to you. So, I mean, definitely, I mean, Continuation of the of the you know war in Gaza is not is not going to be something we are going to be you know I mean you know be uh, I mean of course I mean the humanitarian part is, is more important to us than the, the economy in this case, but the economies will, will, will struggle you know especially sub more of the vulnerable economies around you know I mean uh, around the region you know here it, they will be more vulnerable in terms of like others, but you know definitely I mean wars are not good and what's been, what's happening in, in Gaza is not good. It's, it's, it's a huge uh, human catastrophe, and you know I think the whole world should do something about it. Mm. Just on that point, you said it increases the vulnerabilities. Do you also believe that it changes the investability profile of this region as a result? Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, I mean, I, I like to to look at it as something going to settle very soon. You know, I do want to look at it like a long-lasting problem. I mean, it's a, it is a long-lasting problem, I must, I must not say, but the war itself, you know, I, I hope that, you know, it finishes as soon as possible. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I, th I think, you know, the region is still, you know, very attractive in terms of, like, you know, uh, investment in terms of, you know, and, and you have, I mean, although we are talking about one region, you know, they're re really, and they're not the same, you know, I mean, there are some countries who have different economic characteristics than others, some countries are enjoying, you know, surpluses, enjoying, you know, economical growth, some countries, you know, struggling with inflations and everything. So it's not the same.